I'm sitting there yesterday just, just mentioning a few of the crazy things that aren't crazy. See, we say they're environmentalist wackos because they want to bankrupt the whole country and turn off all our electricity, basically. No, they're not. It's a plan. They're moving the industry to, to dictatorships they control. It's global governance. It's economic warfare, in their own words, using rigged stock markets, rigged currency, rigged interest rates on record to shut everything down that isn't controlled by them. It is a 100% total, complete, abject annihilation of capitalism, of free market choice-driven, demand-driven, quality-driven, free association-driven, renaissance-driven, flaming, liberal-driven, cornucopia, the spirit of Christmas present that God gave us. And instead, it is Leviathan death. And I was just thinking about it, and I, and I talked about how I want Paul Watson, I meant to call him yesterday, to take like the 30 or 40 wild things where, where they go out and say, we're sorry, Muslims, that you have to rape us. Here's flowers. Oh, and, and you know, uh, all the rest of it. And it'll be so good when all Germans have been bred out. We're an evil people. This is said by the head of the Green Party, you know, on national TV. These are sick freakazoids, okay? Truth is, they just hate everybody. They want total control because they're going to exempt themselves from everything they're doing to you. It's a total assault. And then I saw this article today. I mean, it's every day. Gateway Pundit, Infowars.com. Dozens of Swedish women show support for Islam by taking selfies in hijab after Brussels massacre. And they go and apologize and say that Western men are being mean to women, basically. So they flip reality, and they make it all about how Western men are bad. This is the cutting-edge feminism is to defend Islam. Swedish women are showing their support for Islam by taking selfies after the Brussels bombings in hajibs. This is from Hajib Prophet website, where the approving Muslim men tell the feminists what to do, and they thank them. The violence against Muslim women has increased and is extremely worrying. Their basic rights are not being respected. Their civil rights are being... Their civil rights are being respected, and we need to put a stop to this. Being called names in the streets, getting their scarfs and hijabs ripped off their heads, and being slandered has become a daily routine for many Muslim women. And then it goes into how horrible the Westerners are to them. And, of course, these women ought to just wear hoods over their heads, like most of the Muslim countries, and have their genitals cut off, and then live with a dog chain around their neck, or have acid poured on their face uh, to really live the true Muslim lifestyle. How about you being a slave brothel that are legal in most areas of the Middle East? Slave brothels. That's real feminist, isn't it? They call them harems. We have set out to arrange this walk because... We cannot allow this behavior any longer in our society anymore. Come and show your support Friday, the 26th, 1700. In Stockholm, this is Stockholm Syndrome. Isn't it funny? It's in Stockholm. We will walk from Clutherhusten, Platten, to the mosque at Medborgarplasten. This will be a silent demonstration. Wow, women have absolutely no rights under Islam, and these... Brain-dead women are holding a rally in support of the barbarians. Unreal. And look at this. The, the approving Muslim sites are dozens of Swedish women show their support for Islam by taking selfies in the hijab Instagram. Isn't that just cute? Hey, how about you take selfies next to photos of women being hung or stoned to death? In fact, just Google women being stoned. Women, don't show it on TV. I don't want to show it. I can't watch women getting killed. Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Plus, if we show it, the Muslim sites come in, and they're trying to censor us right now, and file fake complaints to shut us down, saying we shouldn't show their handiwork. That's right. The handiwork's okay. We're the bad, evil Western pigs because you know why, don't you? We showed it, and we don't support it. You see, in those countries, in the less radical ones, they, women have to cover everything but their faces and look down. 
and don't talk to a man unless you're talked to. Basically, slave plantation level stuff. But in many of the countries, probably about half of them, they got to wear full outfits where your face can't be seen. Invisible people can't drive a car, and it doesn't matter. They push it on universities. They preach it. They promote it. I'm skipping this break. I can't help it. It's too important. Just think about this. And then just yesterday, they have the Swedish head of this culture program who took over the government-funded tweet about Swedish culture, which if you go there, it's all foreign culture. That's how you destroy culture and throw it in your face and dominate you and break you. And he says, I'm going to have sex with your daughter tonight. She's going to moan and call me daddy. That's a quote. And of course, he's not getting in trouble. The, the state is saying, absolutely, tell us the women belong to you. <laughs> and the Europeans that have been programmed from birth to roll over and be slaves, they roll over and show their bellies. And the women put on the headdresses and run out with flowers and beg to be enslaved. This is what has happened. And I'm not exaggerating it. And this is going on at the universities where if they see Donald Trump 2016 written on chalk, they begin convulsing. Emergency psychologists are called. The dean talks to 40 plus people. And the dean comes out and says, we're going to investigate this. This was meant to terrorize people. The word Donald Trump. We agree. And all over the country, they're arresting people for even doing chalk on their own driveways because they want to train you that you're, there's no lemonade stands. There's no Amish milk, there's no farmer's markets, there's no underground economy, there's no communication, and the greatest crime, the greatest crime is a bumper sticker on your car promoting liberty or chalking your own sidewalk. You will be taught to submit. And if you'll submit to a bunch of arrogant, uneducated, stupid people running around in, 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 in basically third world, uh, you know, pajamas and bossing you around then you'll put up with anything. You'll put up with them saying your kids belong to the state and the word mother and father is bad. You'll go through the naked body scanners. You'll be checked when you come into the U.S. Just yesterday, I talked about how in Sweden, in Germany, in France, in many other areas of Western Europe, the college campuses and the high schools and also the elementary schools part of your credit, you go to a Muslim area or, or you go to a Muslim ghetto and you apologize to the Muslims for the crusades, you give them flowers, you make them food, uh, you clean their homes and the Muslims laugh at you because these are not the cultured uh, Muslims that I grew up knowing, the upper class and from freer countries when Iraq had been freer or Egypt had been freer or Jordan had been freer. Really nice, cool, smart people. These are the lower class Sunni invaders of the entire Middle East that are the majority that are running around attacking everybody and then bullying their own people to be as hardcore and as extreme as possible. And I was thinking about all these articles I've seen the last year where the liberal feminist groups in Germany came out and said, it is German blonde-haired, blue-eyed men raping women in Cologne. It was on video that it was the Wahhabist invaders who had invaded Syria, and then they would blame Syria on the news when they, quote, told the truth and said, no, actually, it's all Syrian or North African refugees. Even that was a lie, too. It was almost exclusively just North Africans uh, or Sunni groups out of Saudi Arabia and other areas that had invaded. So it's lie within lie within lie. And you can pull those articles up, but I was thinking about it when I was on air yesterday, how that just doesn't even sound true when I was saying it. It doesn't sound true that the national feminist groups and the national liberal groups, the Green Party and others, in, in official newspapers with straight faces came out and said... German men did this, and it's going to be good when there's no more original Germans. That was all over the news. TV, Der Spiegel, you name it. And you say, that flies in the face of logic. That's the whole point. Everything the globalists do is the end of logic, the end of prosperity, the end of 2 plus 2 equals 4. And if you can convince people 2 plus 2 equals 5, you have them. Winston Smith, while being tortured at the Ministry of Love, that's why it's loving, he worked at the Ministry of Truth. It was really the Ministry of Lies. 
he's being tortured. And they go, we know you weren't rebelling against us. We just want to torture and kill people. You're too smart. O'Brien torturing him says, I'm smart too. They'll probably torture me to death. I love it. I hate beauty. I hate goodness. I'm a priest of power. I'm going to rip your teeth out. And I'm going to torture you for three months until you aren't even human anymore because I am part of the cult of power and I'm going to ruin everything good. I am a devil worshiper. Now, how did Eric Blair of one of the highest, most elite intellectual families interbred with the elite eugenics families of the Huxleys, the Wedgwoods, the Galtons, and the Darwins? How did he write that book? And then you read it and think it's a horror book, but then you actually study totalitarianism. That's what it is. Because he was led into the Fabian Socialist. He was in the OSS. He was in MI6 after that. And the plan was so evil, he wrote that book, and then he wrote a bunch of papers. I've got a textbook I ought to bring in. It's, I, I was trying to find it in storage the other day that I read in college. A whole textbook on him with his letters and his articles and his nonfiction. I probably read everything George Orwell wrote. Eric Blair. And he says in there, I was led into the inner sanctum. This is what happened. He wrote that about three months before he died. They killed him, folks. He didn't die of tuberculosis. And I would read that in high school and then read it again in college. And I've read it like three more times since then. And I cry now. And I'm serious. Not like retching <laughs> when your grandma dies. I Tears just start coming out of my brain so threatened by the evil that all I want to do is warn people. That's why I'm tearing myself apart on air because I'm forcing myself to admit this is going on. I see these predators creeping up all around us and I know the public can't handle it. I can't handle it either. But, but digressing before I get into the bombshell news because it illustrates the headspace that they basically get us into. I'm sitting there yesterday just, just mentioning a few of the crazy things that aren't crazy. See, we say they're environmentalist wackos because they want to bankrupt the whole country and turn off all our electricity, basically. No, they're not. It's a plan. They're moving the industry to, to dictatorships they control. It's global governance. It's economic warfare, in their own words, using rigged stock markets, rigged currency, rigged interest rates on record to shut everything down that isn't controlled by them. It is a 100% total, complete, abject annihilation of capitalism, of free market, choice-driven, demand-driven, quality-driven, free association-driven, renaissance-driven, flaming, liberal-driven, cornucopia, the spirit of Christmas present that God gave us. And instead, it is Leviathan death. And I was just thinking about it, and, and, and I talked about how I want Paul Watson, I meant to call him yesterday, to take like the 30 or 40 wild things where, where they go out and say, we're sorry, Muslims, that you have to rape us. Here's flowers. Oh, and... and you know, uh, all the rest of it. And it'll be so good when all Germans have been bred out. We're an evil people. This is said by the head of the Green Party, you know, on national TV. These are sick freakazoids, okay? Truth is, they just hate everybody. They want total control because they're going to exempt themselves from everything they're doing to you. It's a total assault. And then I saw this article today. I mean, it's every day. Gateway Pundit, Infowars.com. Dozens of Swedish women show support for Islam by taking selfies in hijab after Brussels massacre. And they go and apologize and say that Western men are being mean to women, basically. So they flip reality and they make it all about how Western men are bad. This is the cutting edge feminism is to defend Islam. Swedish women are showing their support for Islam by taking selfies after the Brussels bombings in hijabs. This is from... Hajib Prophet website, where the approving Muslim men tell the feminists what to do, and they thank them. The violence against Muslim women has increased and is extremely worrying. Their basic rights are not being respected. Their civil rights are being... Their civil rights are being respected, and we need to put a stop to this. Being called names in the streets, getting their scarfs and hajibs ripped off their heads, and being slandered has become a daily routine for many 
Muslim women. And then it goes into how horrible the Westerners are to them. And, of course, these women ought to just wear hoods over their heads like most of the Muslim countries and have their genitals cut off and then live with a dog chain around their neck or have acid poured on their face uh, to really live the true Muslim lifestyle. How about you being a slave brothel that are legal in most areas of the Middle East? Slave brothels. That's real feminist, isn't it? They call them harems. We have set out to arrange this walk because... We cannot allow this behavior any longer in our society anymore. Come and show your support Friday, the 26th, 1700. In Stockholm, this is Stockholm Syndrome. Isn't it funny? It's in Stockholm. We will walk from Klutherhusten, Platten, to the mosque at Medborg Plasten. This will be a silent demonstration. Wow, women have absolutely no rights under Islam, and these... Brain-dead women are holding a rally in support of the barbarians. Unreal. And look at this. The, the approving Muslim sites are dozens of Swedish women show their support for Islam by taking selfies in the hijab Instagram. Isn't that just cute? Hey, how about you take selfies next to photos of women being hung or stoned to death? In fact, just Google women being stoned. Women, don't show it on TV. I don't want to show it. I can't watch women getting killed. Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Plus, if we show it, the Muslim sites come in, and they're trying to censor us right now and file fake complaints to shut us down, saying we shouldn't show their handiwork. That's right. The handiwork's okay. We're the bad, evil Western pigs because you know why, don't you? We showed it, and we don't support it. You see, in those countries, in the less radical ones, they, women have to cover everything but their faces and look down. And don't talk to a man unless you're talked to. Basically, slave plantation level stuff. But in many of the countries, probably about half of them, they got to wear full outfits where your face can't be seen. Invisible people can't drive a car, and it doesn't matter. They push it on universities, they preach it, they promote it. I'm skipping this break. I can't help it. It's too important. This is a network break station. Shouldn't be covering this up, folks. Just so you know. The network break comes up. About a couple minutes, and then there's the uh, regular break at uh, 29 after for stations. Just think about this. And then just yesterday, they have the Swedish head of this culture program who took over the government-funded tweet about Swedish culture, which if you go there, it's all foreign culture. That's how you destroy culture and throw it in your face and dominate you and break you. And he says, I'm going to have sex with your daughter tonight. She's going to moan and call me daddy. That's a quote. And, of course, he's not getting in trouble. The, the state is saying, absolutely, tell us the women belong to you. <laughs> and the Europeans that have been programmed from birth to roll over and be slaves, they roll over and show their bellies. And the women put on the headdresses and run out with flowers and beg to be enslaved. This is what has happened. And I'm not exaggerating it. And this is going on at the universities where if they see Donald Trump 2016 written on chalk, they begin convulsing. Emergency psychologists are called. The dean talks to 40-plus people. And the dean comes out and says, we're going to investigate this. This was meant to terrorize people. The word Donald Trump. We agree. And all over the country, they're arresting people for even doing chalk on their own driveways because they want to train you that you're, there's no lemonade stands. There's no Amish milk, there's no farmer's markets, there's no underground economy, there's no communication, and the greatest crime, the greatest crime is a bumper sticker on your car promoting liberty or chalking your own sidewalk. You will be taught to submit. And if you'll submit to a bunch of arrogant, uneducated, stupid people running around in, 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 in basically third world, uh, you know, pajamas and bossing you around, then you'll put up with anything. You'll put up with them saying your kids belong to the state and the word mother and father is bad. You'll go through the naked body scanners. You'll be checked when you come into the U.S. I first remember Man Cow about five, six years ago. I was on a show and he goes, yeah, it's in the news today that people coming in from Saudi Arabia don't have to take their hoods off or don't have to be searched by the TSA or customs. They just go right through. I went and looked it up. It was true. I couldn't believe it. And now it's in the news that 
Muslim Brotherhood people coming in don't have to do it. I mean, it's a joke, but we do. We do. We have to take our crosses down. We have to submit. We have to roll over. We have to bow. We have to fetch. We have to grovel. This is our back being broken. And every day, I see the people that call themselves the left worshiping anything deviant, anything oppressive, anything sick. They say, you don't have free will. You don't have common sense. You're just a biological robot. We program you. But we have all these rights and our feelings are so important. And we're humans and we're beautiful because we're part of the establishment club allied with the state. Our ideas matter. We're a exalted, protected group. Everyone outside of it is an enemy and has nothing. We are exempt from Obamacare. We get free health care. That's what they get. The specialty university students, all these groups, they opt in, they become part of the socialist boards, and then it is selectively given to them, the free health care, the free housing, the free education. It's all select, though. And then they have disdain, as all parasites do, for their prey. When they see you running a business, paying all the taxes, jumping through the hoops, when they show up to inspect you, especially if they're socialists, they look at you with disdain and burning hate. And they tell you, line up, and what's this? And you tell me what's happening there. And they just get off on it. Like all authoritarians and totalitarians do. And the thing they relish the most is overthrowing logic and two plus two equals four. Common sense. That's why they had the Pope come out and say Italy shouldn't take any of the Muslim migrants and the cultures don't work together and that they need to, you know, send in Italian troops into Albania, which they've done, and he's got 100-foot, 200-foot walls, depending on the area, but he says we can't have walls and we can't check IDs, and Donald Trump's not going to heaven. And meanwhile, the Pope kisses the feet of asylum seekers. The Pope's ritual where he washes and kisses the feet of 12 men took place at the center for asylum seekers just outside Rome, confirms the Vatican. I wonder if he'll stop all the pedophilia and kiss the feet of those people that were abused. I wonder if he'll kiss the feet of the Italians that for decades have had to pay for the electricity for Vatican City, whether they're Catholic or not, and the Rome doesn't even pay for its own bills, the, the, the Vatican City in Rome. And I'm not against Catholics themselves. I'm against a Jesuit socialist running around lecturing us. Oh, but he's not the only one. This is the time of lecturing, isn't it? This is the time. Here's the big story. It's on DrudgeReport.com. Needs to go the most viral of anything we've ever re reported on. Because this is the key to everything right here. This is a true Rosetta Stone, as so many stories are, but this is a whopper. I've told you that I noticed something coming out of China about 18, 19 years ago, at about 97. And I started reading it in textbooks, and it's being pushed at Chicago Business School, you name it. And I would talk about it, and the intellectual uh, sophist fops out there that are pseudo-intellectual would say, Jones is crazy. There's been many articles written. He doesn't know the difference between fascism and socialism or communism. Oh, I, I do know the difference. I know who developed them, who deployed them, the central banks of Europe. It's all in actual academic-level textbooks if you actually care to know reality and not, not, you know, not, what, uh, not what some twit told you in your, quote, college courses that are there to sabotage you and screw your mind up, you can actually go look at the last three Chinese presidents, they're dictators, appointed by the Intercommunist Bureau, the Politburo, kind of like they're announcing presidents and candidates and, and nominees now in America. Oh, silly kid. You don't, your vote doesn't count. See, it's, 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 it's the time of the season now to, to let you know. Your kids aren't yours. We're going to make you take shots. You didn't build your business. Remember, remember all those times that communist leaders would bring in their annual Politburo meeting and have the first announcement before the doors were closed and it was secret. And it would be, in fact, search this, guys. Chinese president. China has perfected capitalism through communism. Another quote is, Chinese president,
communism is the ultimate expression of capitalism. Now, you see, we're getting down to real communism now, folks. Not, you know, spaceships and, you know, mural paintings about heaven and jetpacks and free love and, every, and everybody lives longer and everything's fun. And, of course, it turns you into Moscow or turns you into North Korea, turns you into these, turns you into these hell holes. You see, because capitalism was just a 18th and 19th century term for big robber barons trying to take over the Renaissance and manage it and talk about money and flow and being able to build things. But, but it itself was never true free market. It was an amalgamation of the old East India and Dutch East India Company and a lot of other elites and a mixture of letter of mark type licensure through government and a mixture of French mercantilism. But it was a managed crony capitalist system. So think about that. So I explain that fascism and socialism and communism are all just different management systems that are very similar, but different in how they're given out in textbooks to confuse the proletariat into accepting total centralization and the process where they bring you into socialism, then communism, or they may bring you into fascism. But socialism gets you in debt, gets you dependent 30, 40 years, then you collapse into fascism or outright communism for a period. Then there's a revolution and a reorganization and a, quote, capitalist system is brought in that actually just keeps a lesser form of command and control in control and has a servile population that goes to the next level of development. And this is in all the textbooks. It's in uh, the deliberate dumbing down of America with the Department of Education documents in it. It just says it as well. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. But we're about to enter in America into the long winter of the re-education camps, the banning of speech, huge hordes of young people burning things down if the government doesn't do what they say, with higher-level multinationals directing the hordes, with the government on the backside allied with them, and people like George Soros. I mean, they're coming. Just like Cuba is open now, but only to a handful of companies, Microsoft, Google, General Motors, and others. And they're going to come in and carve up the incredibly rich country, the incredibly hardworking, smart people. They're going to come in with all these folks trained to work 18 hours a day and not complain. And they're going to come in there, and those are going to be some of the best robots the world ever saw. Now, the criminals, the rebellious, the trash is all going to be shipped here. But the communists are about to cash in, just like in China, on a, quote, one-state-managed capitalist economy with mobile execution vans. And if you complain, you'll be disappeared forever, like they do on ESPN, and no one said it was a scandal that ESPN didn't say that was wrong. We have our TV now broadcasting down there as people are beat up and disappeared, and they're going, good, get rid of him. Now, that's quite a build-up to our top story, isn't it? Here it is. Barack Obama, I'm sure you heard. Obama, there's little difference between communism and capitalism. Just choose from what works. And actually, no U.S. News even picked this up till we put it out and Drudge picked it up. See, because it's just meant to go under the radar. There's no difference between communism and capitalism. Now, who was wrong about the real labels, trendies and pseudo-intellectuals that, you know, got their got their, uh, you know, degree in a Cracker Jack box from one of these fake universities. They're all fake, didn't you know? Oh, I was right again. They're about to bring us into the collapse phase. Get ready. This is key. Because this, this is a scientific study by a university. Uh, here is the study. Thank you. Uh, published in Yahoo News, The Street, you name it. And tell people what it found just beyond... Tangy Tangerine did that we sell at InfoWarsHealth.com and uh, how big of a breakthrough this is. Just an example of the system knew this. I mean, Linus Pauling won the Nobel Prize for similar research, but this is a modern reconfirmation. Tell people what it says in there. 
Well, for goodness sake, you know, the medical profession has been telling people for 100 years that vitamins just give you expensive urine, that it's nonsense, don't take it. You can even read some reports that will tell you incorrectly in scare tactics that vitamins are dangerous. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Everything that I do, everything that my colleagues do, all holistic physicians in the world, what we do is we provide science-based, clinically verified, non-drug therapeutics. And so the Clemson study is awesome on two points because it looked at Longevity's nutritional supplements. It looked at two of Longevity's nutritional supplements, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Classic. And it, it cultured uh, uh, human cells and then it added the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Classic to it in vitro studies with human uh, uh, tissue cultures and they came up with two conclusions. Number one, there is 100% zero toxicity. There is no toxicity, zero toxicity from the Longevity's nutritional supplements. Number two, the Longevity nutritional supplements Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Ultimate Classic uh, increased the death of colon cancer cells. It increased the death of colon cancer cells. This is a breakthrough. Well, you know, it's not a breakthrough as far as I'm concerned because I've seen research like this for the last 24 years. Everything that I and my colleagues have done for the last 24 years is science-based and clinically verified, but this is brand new. This is a hot ticket item, and it's done by Clemson University and their results were so remarkable that now they're going to follow through with human studies. They're going to follow through with double-blinded clinical trials that are actually going to show the doubters, the would-be, the ne'er-do-wells, the doubting Thomases that yes, in fact, guess what? Pick your head out of the sand, lift yourself up, dust yourself off, and take your nutritional supplements because if you do not, it is only a matter of time until your body runs out of something that it needs and when it runs out of calcium or magnesium or sulfur or vitamin A or vitamin B, something breaks. So you get arthritis, you get heartburn, you get type 2 diabetes, you get high blood pressure. Well, I had um, ringing in the ears and I have a severe back problem and I noticed that uh, right away, and I was only using the minerals, uh, that uh, the ringing in my ears went away. And after starting with um, the glucosamine product back then, my back started feeling a lot better. I had just got traded to Atlanta. I had a multitude of injuries. Um, I had just came from uh, making an all-star team, but I wasn't able to play an all-star team because I had broken my wrist. I used the product, came back the next year, and had a, a great year. Stayed healthy for like three straight years without any issues. So I was working at a fast food restaurant. I was overweight. I had knee problems. Being overweight, I couldn't exercise. I was eating all of the wrong foods, and so it caused a whole lot of problems. Uh, I was introduced to the products, and I, after about four months, I decided to try the products, and um, I lost the weight. I changed my eating habits, so I changed my diet, and I have taken care of the knee problems, and I've been able to um, really change my whole life. Based on decades of research by our founder, Dr. Joel Wallach, our philosophy is that your body needs at least 90 essential nutrients to function optimally. These nutrients include 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and 2 to 3 essential fatty acids. The foundation of your nutritional health program should begin with what we call 90 for life. So the first step to optimal health is providing your body with the core nutrition provided by the Healthy Start Pack. The Healthy Start Pack contains our great tasting Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus, and Osteo FX Plus. This is the core nutrition pack upon which you can build a supplement program to suit your specific nutritional needs by adding any combination of over 450 other products which are offered by Longevity and its family of companies. There are many great combinations of our products targeted at thousands of different health concerns. While the combination of products in the Healthy Start Pack provide a powerful base for sustained health, Ultimate Wellness can be further supported and customized with additional longevity products, depending on your own personal needs. To better understand this concept, picture 90 for life as the center of a flower. This center is your core Healthy Start Pack. While each of the other products is formulated as a standalone supplement, all products work more effectively if they are taken along with the 90 for life. So, you would consider the additional products to be petals of the flower. For example, 
If you are suffering with joint pain and you want to support your body, you might decide to add CM cream and glucogel to your 90 for life program. In this case, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Ultimate EFA Plus, and Osteo FX Plus make up the center of your flower. Glucogel and CM cream then create the petals. These products are also available at a savings when purchased together in one package called the Healthy Bone and Joint Pack. Alternatively, you might have the Healthy Start Pack at the center of your flower and add Cardio FX for cardiovascular support or Sweeties for blood sugar support as petals to your flower. There are many great combinations of our products targeted at thousands of different health concerns. Refer to our website or catalog for the most up-to-date information that will assist you, your friends, family, or customers in picking the best flower for your nutritional needs. Based on FDA-recognized health claims that omega-3 essential fatty acids help promote and support healthy cardiovascular function, the Ultimate EFA Plus delivers a blend of the finest of omega-3 essential fatty acid oils. These oils are sourced from only the best and finest of cold water fish. Ultimate EFA is a must-have for people who want to derive the benefits of a full range of essential fatty acids, including omega-3, 6, and 9, sourced from organic flax, borage, and evening primrose. This product helps support and maintain healthy skin and soft tissues. Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a complete multivitamin mineral complex. It contains a base of majestic earth organic plant-derived minerals, blended with the highest grade of vitamins, amino acids, and other beneficial nutrients, including 115 fruits and vegetables which are legendary for their antioxidant and other phytonutrient value. Beyond Tangy Tangerine is all natural and contains no starch, no fillers, no wheat or yeast, and absolutely no artificial sweeteners or preservatives, and is therefore glycemic friendly. Science-based, clinically verified, medical nutrition, boilerplate medical nutrition formulations that can dramatically support and promote your body's ability to fix itself. Now everybody asks, well, why longevity? Why not? Uh, GNC. Why not something sold by Andrew Lessing on the Home Shopping Network? Why not just get something cheaper at Costco? Well, nutritional supplements are like chicken soup. The recipe is everything. Longevity's recipe of health recovery formulations is based on $25 million of federally funded research that the founder of Longevity wrote and which currently exists in the Smithsonian Institution in the United States. And furthermore, the information that was gleaned through this massive amount of research, $25 million this research project cost, 12 years. They did 26,000 autopsies. And then Dr. Wallach took the information that he gleaned through this massive amount of pragmatic research and started applying it clinically as a naturopathic physician. Dr. Wallach is the unheralded superstar, superman of science-based, clinically verified, licensed and regulated naturopathic medicine. There is no naturopathic physician, no MD physician, no research pathologist, no MD clinician who has more research experience and more clinical experience than Dr. Wallach. His resume eclipses everybody else's, and it's because of his resume that you should pay attention to what we have to say. Because there's no other nutritional company in the world that has Dr. Wallach's track record. You need to fill your body's nutritional tank up to the brim, fill it to the brim with the 90 essential nutrients. Now, not all vitamin supplements are created equal. Vitamins are like wine. There's a great deal of difference between Annie Boone Springs green apple wine and a nice, you know, California Cabernet. While they're all made from grapes, what's the difference? The recipe's the difference. I've been involved with naturopathic medicine, the clinical application of naturopathic medicine as a primary care naturopathic physician for over 20 years. And as God witness, the recipes of the vitamin supplements offered by the Longevity Company formulated by Dr. Wallach eclipse anything else in efficacy that I have ever seen. Dr. Wallach's nutritional supplements produce more consistent results than any other nutritional supplements. Why? Because their recipe is better. It's that simple. 
Yeah, well, you're going to spend hard-earned money on vitamins. You've got to buy them somewhere. You might as well get the best ones in the world. For goodness sake, if your kid wanted to be coached in basketball and you had the option to get him coached by, by Michael Jordan or by your high school basketball coach for the same amount of money, you'd go with Jordan, right? Why? Because he's the best. If Albert Einstein was still alive and your son wanted to learn science and you could hire Albert Einstein as a tutor or your high school science teacher, who would you hire? You'd hire Einstein. Well, if you want advice with nutritional supplements, quite frankly, you're a knucklehead if you don't lean on Dr. Wallach's clinical experience and Dr. Wallach's research resume. Dr. Wallach's knowledge base about science-based, clinically verified, non-drug treatments eclipses anybody else. Dr. Wallach is the Michael Jordan, the Wayne Gretzky, the Albert Einstein of holistic medicine. His stuff works better than anything I've ever seen. So if you take one Alex pack, one healthy start pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month into your body, into you add that to your diet every day, it's a game changer. Because when you do that, guess what happens? It's the first time in your life your body has been nutritionally satisfied. The first time. Switches start turning on in your brain that have been turned off for decades.